We just got done sharpening Trent's knife, both his EDC for his hunting trips and every day, and his Benchmade Altitude that is hopefully going to be field dressing a couple elk hopefully. this fall. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Stay tuned, check out the whole video, and uh, let us know what you think in the comments. So you've got Land of the Free 3.0. That's what we're calling it, yeah. Because yeah. we did one and two and then we kind of veered away from it. We realized the people kind of want three. So we're going back and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do another, it's gonna be a day by day elk series is what it is. And one video a day. One video a day, yeah. That's a lot of work, yeah. We hired <laughs> They're a gonna hold you to it. Yeah, I know, we hired a couple more uh, editors. So I think Cody and I, we may or may not get some sleep this next, uh, <laughs> before Christmas, but. You guys were uh, you guys were slumped over your computers a, for the whole lot. month of October last it was year. A lot. Yeah, for the last three years, it's yeah. been crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So. How many states are you guys hitting? Uh, I'm told, I don't know, I thought it was four this morning, but on the way up here, someone told me we're doing six. So, six. Yeah, so six Throw different a couple states. More. Just put a couple more in there. If you want to have a state, we can do another state. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. Are you kicking so. it off at Oregon again? In Oregon again? Or? We will. Yeah, we will. We'll kick it off in Oregon. I'll be here in Oregon as well as Steve and Trevor. And then Cody, he'll take off to Wyoming right off the bat. And then I'll go to Montana, or I'll go to Colorado after that, and then we'll all meet up in New Mexico. Then we'll hit Montana, and yeah, it's a yeah. The long haul. The that's long gonna, haul. That's gonna be so much fun. Though. It's a long month. It's a long month. Yeah. It's, the biggest thing is the way from family. You know, the just being away from home the whole time is that's tough. It's totally. Brutal. It's brutal, but that's awesome. It's beats awesome. Uh, beats cutting timber too, though. It does. It does. That's a, yeah. That that was kind of one of my old life. I, I cut trees for 18 years, so that's wow. why this whole thing, as far as sharpening, I mean, we have to sharpen our saws every single day, and I carry like two chains a day. So mm -hmm. every single day after work, I'd come back home and sharp grind chains. Right. So yeah. sharp tools is it makes a world of difference. And two, like uh, with born and raised, meat care is one of my utmost. Uh, things that I, I, I really take a lot of pride in our meat care mm -hmm, that we have. Mm -hmm. And so, and it starts with a sharp knife, honestly. All that starts with a sharp knife. And, and um, anyway, and so we'll go through some stuff here. Some, I'm sure stuff you're going to probably teach me. Oh, yeah. And then I'll show you how I do it and I'll probably learn some more, but yeah. So, well, let's, yeah, let's get into that. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go through and sharpen both your Benchmade Altitude, mm -hmm. your your meat dedicated knife for yep. in the field, harvesting the game or, or getting that game from the from the kill site to hanging back in camp. And uh, we'll also sharpen up your EDC, basically the, the camp knife, right? Yeah, so I'll keep this in my pocket all the time. And um, anyway, and I'll, usually I wear this around my neck is what I've done in the past. And um, good, old, good old neck knife. <laughs> it's, well, it's just nice to have it there. And it's never actually, I've even slept with it every single night. So wow. I've never had it come out and kill me yet. So that's a good thing too. <laughs> but, but yeah, but that's usually just for meat care. And then, like you said, the EDC is for cutting rope and I like Everything to whittle. Else, I'm a yeah. whittler. Yeah. Okay. Spoons yeah. are Love like. The, I've done a, I've done a camp spoon. Yeah. I have done a Aspen spoon before. Yeah. Okay. This year I've got a little, little secret. Okay. I haven't showed anybody, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a whittler's. Maybe I'll give it away at the end or something like that, but oh, it's, that'd be cool. it's amazing when back in the day, um, quite a while ago now, but I'd never, ever used to carry a pocket knife. Never. Mm -hmm. Grandpa would, my uncles and stuff would and mm -hmm. everything. And I just never carried one until I, you know, I was like, oh yeah. Okay. I started carrying one. Now, if you don't have it on you. Oh my gosh. Yep. It's you, you're naked. It's almost like your hat almost. Yep. So, so the first and most important thing that I would say mm -hmm. for sharpening a knife at home preseason before you go out, yep. whether it's a weekend trip or whether it's a month long, is to sharpen at an angle that you know that you can maintain in the field. If you're using like a work sharp system, you guys, this is actually your sharpener. Yeah. And. Bornraiseoutdoors.com. <laughs> just, just throwing that out Find there. Find Just throwing that. Just, just, I was just. We'll cut that, Steven. That. Yeah, we're gonna cut I'm that just out. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, these are set at 20 degrees on the ceramic. Uh, same thing on the field sharpener, 20 degrees. And so, and you've got that 20 degree guide there for the diamond as well. 
So if you got 20 degrees there, that means you want to set 20 degrees on your home sharpener. Yep. This is basically what you use. This is what I use. Yep. Yeah. We're going to set, uh, yeah, just put that at 20 degrees. Perfect. Ready to go there. Let's actually see the altitude. You said it was pretty sharp still. I think it's pretty decent, but just give it a one. Give it a, I'm going to see where we're at here. That's pretty decent. Yeah, it's not terrible. So these are... Uh, I oh, run yeah. a tight ship. No, that's nice. I kind of run a tight nice. ship. So a little dirty there. So I'll actually good save this. I'm going to save this chance. for uh, when we get to the finer belts. We're just going to touch it up Perfect. on the finer belts. These S90V hardly needs sharpening ever. You yes. just got to keep that edge straight. And that's one thing I would say with it. Don't let that get dull. That is that is huge, especially really on... keep on top of it. Yeah, yeah, because once it gets dull, it goes faster than getting it back. Oh, Sometimes steel is so hard. It's with with like a field guide sharpener or something. Yep. With these, it's not bad at all. But yep, this will handle it. Yeah. So, but this needs, needs <laughs> some TLC. Well, let's see where we're at. Uh, let's see where I we're at here. I love these knives. Yeah. Osborne. That's that. Oh, I don't know the number, but it's the dash one. The carbon yeah, fiber. This is S ninety two. Yeah, that one's. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. they got you hooked up. Yeah. I she's think, she's uh, not good. I think. Oh. All right. That's not it's bad. It's still not good. All right. It's still not good. Well, I'm going to, so I'm going to skip this real coarse belt and we're going to jump to something a little finer just because okay. I want to make sure we don't, we don't have to take off any more material than, uh, than we need to. And I think that, that is definitely something to be said too. Like you can touch up a knife and you don't have to take a bunch of material off. Yeah. We don't have to go too far. So this is a, this is a X4 belt. Uh, it's the, it's a, the second most fine belt that we have, and we're just going to use it to remove a tiny bit of material. I swear I know what I'm doing here. No, I have a trouble sometimes with the same deal. There we go. So one thing I was going to ask you about is speed, like speed of the sharpener. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you, I mean, you can go anywhere from just barely to yep. just winding on it. Yep. What do you find that's like best speed? I usually go like three quarter, something like that. Yeah, I wouldn't put it all the way up. Um, I mean, you're in the right range. Usually I'm going to go somewhere, especially if you've got harder knives, a little more speed's not going to hurt anything. Okay. Harder steel on the knife. Gotcha. Uh, but I would, I'm usually medium, like 50%, sometimes okay. a little lower actually. Oh, um, really? So yeah, I'm usually a medium low speed. Okay. Um, the belt will do the work just fine without, without a ton of power, but you're not, you're not doing any damage by going a little faster. Gotcha. Gotcha. One of the next most important steps, and this is really just a, well, we've got it on the board so we don't forget, an abrasive hack. Yeah. So I'm going to run. It. I'm going to run this knife through on the X4, and then I'm going to switch, and I'm going to run the altitude on the same belt. Okay. And then I'm going to go change belts down to this uh, this purple belt, this super fine belt. The leather strop, pretty much. Basically a leather strop. Yeah, it's like six thousand grit. And I'll show you how to use it, and then uh, maybe I'll let you sharpen your altitude. You can show me what you're doing. I can figure something out. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Got a little practice. I'll try. Place the knife in the guide. The machine's off. I'm not going to push down too hard on the belt. It's just kind of setting in there. Resting. Yep. I'm careful of this thumb stud. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to be touching that thumb stud to the belt because I don't want to grind that off for you. Gotcha. If you need to take that off, you can use a little Torx bit and uh, you can actually pull those to off. To sharpen them? Yeah. I got you. Yeah, okay. but I've you, never uh, done that. I've never done that. You probably don't need to, Yeah. but you can kind of, you know, you can kind of like get it, get it angled it. in there Okay. so that you don't have to have to touch that. Okay. So we'll set it in there. Rest in the guide, power on, pull through, and I'm gonna stop with the tip on the middle of the belt. This is one thing that I've learned from watching you guys in the past is a lot of people, they'll just pull all the way through, but you're taking twice the material, right? Well, and actually what the deal is with the tip is because these belts are flexible. Right, it'll- It'll, it'll round over twice that. Twice the material off the tip. Yes, yeah. yes, definitely, yep. And so you end up with a, a little bit of a dulled tip. Gotcha. Which is definitely a, well, you can't have that in the field. Not good. Your knife's you know, half as good. Right. And uh, yeah, so that's gotcha. what we're going to do here. Okay. And stop. That's pretty light. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to alternate sides because okay. it was already real sharp. So now if it wasn't sharp, you would not alternate sides. I would probably sharpen five strokes on one okay. side oh, and many. then see if I had a a burr mm -hmm. yeah if it was real dull right um and uh but yeah it might be three or something something that i can keep track of okay. so maybe three or five strokes on one side and then check to see if i've got a burr okay. and then three to five strokes or the same number of strokes on the other, on side, the other side make sure i've got a burr and then i would then move on to my next knife or change the belt okay 
So, uh, and I'm actually close there because you're really sharp. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna maybe alternate three or four more times. Just kind of just get a real honed edge, just if there's yep. any chips or anything. Yeah. Just take out. I don't see anything in there. Right. I could give it a real close look, but I'm not seeing anything in there. So, okay. yeah, we'll just alternate real quick, and then we'll move on. Okay. Yeah, aren't you sharpen the altitude up unless you want me to give it a go and doesn't matter to me whatever you want me to do so the last yeah we wrote it up there but use proper technique is the last point on here and i just mentioned that real quick place the knife in the guide power on pull through stop with the tip on the belt and that's going to be the same thing so if you're on a if you're on a field sharpener too on the ceramic or the diamond on mm -hmm. there uh, you're going to want to stop with the tip in the diamond rather than Bring dragging it off. it off the edge because potentially what's happening right there is you've got some downward pressure and you're and you're pushing down off the edge of that and the same thing that's, can happen you can kind of damage the tip of the blade that's actually really really good to, to talk about I, I i actually don't do that honestly so do you want me to hit this yeah let's do it all right i like to rev it up just oh, a little yeah. bit just to make sure she's working let the ladies know you're coming 100 percent So I'm doing the light. Usually, normally, I would do a little bit faster, but I see what you're saying about the slower, the the, the kind of a medium, you know, yeah. medium slow. I think it also makes you feel a little more comfortable with the machine, and you're not, you know, a little more revving up right? to 6,500 RPMs. And we're men, though. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. That's sharp. And one thing you were doing that was actually really good is I see a lot of people who will come through and as they get to the end, you know, their wrist is up to you right. know, 45 degrees. Well, if you look at the tip, you know, that's only, that's only 10 or 12 degrees or something like that. Gotcha. And so if you're going way too far, you're definitely going to be grinding that tip down. And I right. notice you're, you're basically pulling straight through and that belt comes up and meets that, Correct. And meets that tip. So you don't really have to compensate. For that at all and i learned that a lot on the uh on the tool sharpener where it's you come off you kind of follow that angle yeah, around yeah. the tip of a machete or a whatever it may be yep and you don't actually yeah you don't have to move a ton yes it's just right there exactly and yep it's not too awful much all right we're going to switch down to the 6000 grit belt and uh and just touch these up really fine edge and they'll be good to go for your for your elk season perfect Should be pretty quick. Yeah, that feels feels real nice. That's sharp. That is sharp. All the way to the tip. Sweet. Cool. Thank you, man. Yeah. Appreciate it. Get this one going. Go ahead. And uh, we'll send you on your way. 100%. I could kill something in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like it? I like it. That looks real nice. That is yeah, smooth. Smooth. You've sharpened this one a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Recap real quick. Repeatable angle, 20 degrees in the shop, 20 degrees in the field. Just to save you some time, put on, if your knives are dull, put on that coarse abrasive and run all your knives through, switch it down, run all your knives through, just save some time. Yeah. And, uh, and you're not breaking up your process, so you get real good at a consistent stroke. And then use the proper technique. Make sure you maintain the tip by stopping on the middle of the belt or on the middle of your diamond abrasive or whatever you're using in the field. Uh, place the knife in the guide. The reason we do that and that we don't just run the power the whole time is because as you're sliding the knife in there, you would have some grinding happening as you're placing the knife in the guide. And so you can develop a little bit of a, a swale in the back here. Gotcha. You don't want that. You want to preserve the original geometry. Gotcha. So place it in, then power on. As soon as, you, as soon as you power on, start drawing through. That way you've got uh, the same amount of material removal throughout, throughout the whole 
blade, which is and, what you want. And two, I, I noticed like with what you do and what I do as far as as far as how much we hold for pressure on it and, mm -hmm. and for speed and stuff like that. What I where I started, you know, is my wife. The whole kitchen yeah, oh, drawer yeah. is full of old, you know, knives. So I mean, the practice and practice and practice. Yeah, We've don't just break this. it out yeah, right yeah. before hunting season and be like, I need my hunting knife sharp. You know, yeah, sharpen all your knives. It, it's to have a sharp knife is pretty special. Oh yeah. Yeah, and if, you, if you've if you got a tool like this, I mean, this is a power tool. Yeah. It's not a, I mean. It's a man tool. It is a man tool. 100%. That's right. And there's, there's plenty of ways to sharpen a knife, but if you're going to use something like this, which is really capable, awesome tool, just expect to use some practice. You don't, I mean, you don't take a big old 400 chainsaw out there and. I don't even know what that is, but yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't. I don't. You're right. <laughs> you are exactly right. I've never even taken a 300. A 300. So. I yeah, <laughs> no, um, I, I totally, totally agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, it's just been awesome coming down here to work sharp. And uh, every single time we get to come down here and this awesome studio and, and to work with our friends, it's, it's a pretty special time. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, we got a big season coming up, Land of the Free. We're calling it 3.0. I don't know. Anyway, but uh, yeah, <laughs> tune into that, please. And as always, work sharp. Thanks, man. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for being here, man. It was right. awesome. Subscribe down below and uh, leave comments if you have any questions on uh, future knife sharpening.